All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, Aesop Grimm here, and this is the continuation of our Learning Stellar series where I'm the one learning. There is a lot going on. Uh, number one, you can see the UNE has attacked us, and so that's where I paused it. Number two, you should see that we're in 2611, and that's substantially down the road from where I left off at last time. I decided, uh, I started to record what I was doing, and I quickly realized we were in a grind. And um, so I figured I would do that part offline and I would give you guys a back briefing, which is what this video is to show you what all happened. Now, I also want to explain that the last time I tried this, we had a glitch. So this is like the third time that I've done this video and we had a glitch happen. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give you the explanation. However long that takes, it should probably take 10 to 15 minutes. And I'm gonna make that its own video. And then the next video, we're gonna conduct the war. So I'm gonna talk about what I was doing in the interim, how I reorganized planets, what my goals were and the problem I ran into, what my solution was to that problem and what I was working towards that may have caused the UNE to decide to attack us. And then I'm gonna tell you where we're at now what I had to do because we're at war now, I had to shift some jobs around, and then I'm gonna explain my strategy that I'm employing for this, okay? So number one, what was I doing during that grind? Well, I, that cycle that I told you guys about, it was uh, not really job creation. We already had the jobs created. We were having to recover populations that died to the Saigons um, to fill jobs that we already had but we didn't have the population for so while doing that i upgraded my droids so that they would be good at the worker jobs uh both of these the vectorians and the droids boy droids both have efficient processors but the vectorians are more geared towards doing research and then they also Yeah, they're more geared towards doing research. And the droids are more geared to working the menial jobs. So we have a lot more menial jobs than we have specialist jobs. So these numbers here, they're completely inverted. We should have a lot more droids than we have Vectorians, but we don't. That's one thing, but it might be a pipe dream for me to get things organized in the way that I want. That might just never happen. It looks great on paper. It would be nice to happen, but actually going and making it happen is a whole nother deal. And I've tried. I uh, went in and I reformed our government because one of the things that I need to do is I need to move populations around a lot. I need to get my Vectorians out of worker jobs and put droids into those jobs. And so I dropped national zeal in favor of the Corvée system, which waives all influence costs for pop resettlement, except for the very last pop on a planet. If you decide to move that and abandon the planet, it is gonna cost you some influence, but that's not what I'm planning on doing. And then what I started realizing was what I just told you, we're inverted on our population. And so I thought, okay, well, you know what? Uh, what we need just is in general, we need workers. We need to fill these jobs. And whether it's droid or Vectorian, whatever, we just need to get workers. And how can I do that? Well, I thought, hey, I could attack the UNE. And instead of using Doomsday to blow up their worlds, I would use my massive invasion fleet of Warforms. Uh, war, what are they called? Warforms? It doesn't matter. Now I'm now I'm curious. Oh yeah, I was right. Cybrix Warforms. And, uh, and droid armies to invade and take their fleets and uh, hopefully win the war and then sue for peace because it's a total war option. We don't really have a victory condition. And that's how I would get a my hands on a whole lot of populations that we could then assimilate and they would become Vectorians. So in order to do that, I started thinking to myself, well, how best to attack them while not losing my own area? Because when I attack them, they're going to attack me elsewhere. 
So I thought, okay, I have to be able to defend. And so if you count with me, Poa was one defense point. Jengal was a second. Biltron was a third. Because there's a wormhole there. Carino, for the same reasons, is a fourth. Shiat, for the same reasons, wormhole is a fifth. And Fuldora is a sixth. Now, all of these stations have defense modules in them, and we have a, a talent, I forget what it's called, a perk, an ascendancy perk, that uh, increases that even more. So we're sitting here at like 66,000 fleet power, 64 to 66 at most of these stations. Um, but I know from prior experience that that's just not enough, that especially if they decide to stack up 150,000 strong naval fleets and they can overrun you. So what they really need is they need one of my fleets here, one of these 88 to 93,000 naval fleet power uh, fleets to come in and supplement them. And if I can do that, then I'm good. But that's six fleets, right? Well, one, two, three, four, maybe Behemoth at 40, but I would really rather not. Not Doomsday. Doomsday is a planet crack cracker. Uh, five and six. Possibly seven if you count Behemoth. Well, that at best leaves me with one offensive fleet to go in and uh, take their worlds and, and bl blow up all their systems and, and land my armies and protect my army fleets on, the, on their way there and take their planets and win the war while I play defense to keep everything, to keep them out of our space so that when we sue for status quo, they haven't taken anything and, and it's only us that have taken things. And the way I would do that, I decided, was that I would, uh, well, no, that that's actually down. I'll explain that later. Um, so what I was going to need then is I was going to need more naval capacity to build up at least three more fleets, I thought. And I would prefer to build up four more fleets so that I wouldn't have to use Behemoth by himself anywhere. I could stick Behemoth up here with a naval fleet stacking on Fuldora or Carino. They seem to favor those areas. Um, I didn't really want to rely on Behemoth as a, a fleet itself. So I needed four more fleets. And I didn't have the naval cap for that. So what I did was I built up a bunch of anchorages. We were sitting at like 13 out of 24 star bases. So I, I put that all the way up to 24. And they're all filled up. They're, they're maxed out. But they're currently building their defense platforms. Now, that's with the idea that if you're going to come into my territory, it's going to cost you. I'm going to bleed you at every system that I can. Even if you're able to overwhelm me, you're going to lose troops. And you're going to lose them the further into my interior that you march, the more you're going to lose. And uh, so I have every single one of these places ha is full to whatever their capacity is with defense platforms. Um, and that got me up to 1,672, okay? So uh, that was the plan. And then what I did is I was uh, doing planetary management over here. So for example, Unity, uh, I think I remember, I, I told you guys already, I believe. Oh, look, we have a sixth. Oh yeah, we do. There we go. Okay. So I'll get to that in a minute. I think I've told you already that I deprioritized research because we're really at the end of the research tree. I don't really feel like I need anything else. So I got rid of the research stations here. I put in some more fortresses. I put in a planetary shield generator. I put in a galactic stock exchange. I put in an auto curating vault, which I really don't think I need because we're also done with the tradition tree. Uh, but I put in a Grand Embassy complex, and that allowed me to completely stack the Senate with envoys. So we're, I've been vetoing legislation, certain legislation, and the stuff I vote on, we carry a lot of diplomatic weight. So the fact that I was building up my fleet capacity hugely, I think, caught their eye. 
And then the fact that we're railroading people over here in the Senate, really, they're like, we got to get rid of these people. And that's what I think led to them declaring war on us. Other things that I've done is, uh, let me see if I can find an example. I've put up refineries wherever I could so that now we're not having a problem here. This was actually causing me a great deal of a problem. It was bleeding all of my money. I was having to spend a ton of money on this stuff because we were at like neg 25 on volatile notes. Now we're at plus 12, plus 11, plus 13. So, excuse me, that's really good for us. Okay, uh, the other thing, and we have to do this right now. You're gonna see me do this live actually, and then I need to remember to save it. We're at war now. Actually, let's go over the strategy first. We're at war right now. We've been attacked by the UNE. It just happened. Strike Force Dragon um, is going to Dorfil. It's going to be Dragon, Hippogriff, and Minotaur. These are my offensive fleets. They're all going to Dorfil. And then my transport fleet is going to move to here. And they're going to take the, there's two planets. There's one planet and a orbital in here that the, my invasion force has to take. After that, we're moving north. Behemoth. I had to pick with my remaining fleets. One place has to stay open. I decided I'm going to attack Jengal. I'm going to try and force them to see that and make a calculus and they're going to run the numbers in their head and decide we better go around because this is open. Well, that's going to take them time. And my strategy is built on going rapidly. And you'll see what I'm what I have planned here pretty soon. So I'm going to force them to co come around here, hopefully, by defending Chengal with my defense forces in here and um, CNS Behemoth. And uh, that'll leave this avenue open for them to come in through here. Uh, Doomsday is pre-deploying to Othriga. Strike Force Charybdis is going to cutting. Oh wait, Garuda. I forgot about Garuda. Garuda is coming up to defend Biltron. Charybdis is going to Foldora. And Skila is going to Shiat, but I'm going to change that. They're actually going to go to Carinho. The reason is tactical. If I put them at Shiat, that means I'm defending Foldora and Shiat, and they can come in behind me, and I might not know that. I might be over here messing around with stuff. And that's going to allow them to run amok in here unchecked if they can come through with a big enough fleet to take over Carino, which they will. So instead, I'm going to take Carino and force them to maybe opt for Shiat or fight me head on over here. If they go for Shiat, I can now run a pincer movement. I have them ring fenced. They can't get out through Foldora. They can't come through Carino without a fight. And so they're stuck with just here. And I can bring Foldora in and Carino to attack them together. So I thought that was a much better move. That's what I'm going to go with. The overall strategy is to rapidly... I. I need to send one of my three offensive fleets out here. And depending on how much naval cap they have over here, I may need to send all of them. In fact, I am. I'm going to. I'm going to go out here. I, I need to take this area because of the L gate. I, I, I need to control that L gate. I'll probably take this area too. And then we're shooting over here and we're going straight for their core worlds. So we're going to blow up every world that we run into on, on the way. And we want to end this fast. I'm probably not going to be able to keep everything, but I'm hoping to minimize what I lose while absolutely devastating their core worlds. We're going to go blow Earth up. Um, and that's and so I'm going to need to protect Doomsday. So that's the idea. And we'll see how that works. Now to do that. You can see we're at plus 43 and it might get, get worse from here. This is not enough. Our fleets are deployed now. And so they cost a lot more. And if you run out of credits, we will actually substantially lower in our uh, DPS, our damage output. And that can happen quickly 
whenever you got your mind on all kinds of other stuff. So what I need to do is uh, I don't have the ability to take advantage of all this new fleet cap we made with the anchorages, but what I can do is I can take people from places like right here. I can go in here, I can unemploy my soldiers and because it's free for me to resettle I will send them to Robalius and I'm actually I'm actually thinking um, Jaffone might be a little bit more protected so let me start with Jaffone Jaffone also has uh No, apparently. Wait a minute, I better double check this, guys. Jeff Fon has 52 open jobs. 32 of them are technicians. Okay. What I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to deprioritize minerals because I'm making a lot. And soldiers. Okay, so we, we could, we need 16 more. Send a Vectorian and send these four. Okay, so that puts us at 12. Let's go to Heaven Cure. Unemploy the soldiers. Resettle to Jaffon. And uh, send this guy also. All right, now how are we looking at Chef Home? Seven. Go to Vium Prime. And resettle to Chef Home. Chef Home's a little bit deeper in the interior than Rebalius. So I want to fill Chef Home up first. Zeldra has 12. Resettle four of them to Jaffone. Ah. Never mind. Okay. Uh, now go to Rebalius. Rebalius has... That's my bad. I should have changed it up here. Rebalius. And uh, where was it? Zeldra? Yeah. Send that guy also. Okay. F full prime. We want a bunch of credits. A bunch of them. Uh, resettle to. It was Rebalius. Where are you at, Rebellious? Here you are. All right, I didn't have anything at Corolla. Vermilion, I'll keep because it's a naval world. I'll just keep those guys there. Unemploy these four. And resettle them to Rebellious. Um, where are we at? Vermilion, Fume Prime, Dodonum, I don't think I have anything at. Rebalius doesn't have, I don't think they have any uh, soldiers. Haramuth. Old Door is a generator world uh, with soldiers. Resettle to Rebalius. Where are you at, Rebellious? There you are. And uh, Monocadir, I'll leave alone. And Baham Prime, nothing's there. Okay. Okay. Um, we have a few others lurking around. We'll resettle this guy. Resettle here. 
resettle, set everything. Uh, Rebalius itself has, okay, because uh, leader. Now, the only other thing that bothers me is if we lose Mira Prime, we are gonna be hurting on alloys. And so I want to prioritize my ring world. They're better at forge production anyway. And I will, if I can remember to during the war, move populations over from Mura Prime to Forge Section A to work these uh, these alloy jobs. Okay, guys. Everything is set, I believe. I've moved everything to Rebalius. I, do I have people set up correctly? Yes. Doomsday. Yep. Behemoth. Yes. Garuda. Uh, yes. And then here's my three offensive forces. Okay, let's create a save point. Uh, just call it... I don't know. Call it new. And I'm going to go ahead and call this an episode because if we have glitchy things happen again, I need to be able to restart it. And I don't want to have to do this explanation all over again. So you know now what happened. You know what I was doing with the planets. You know that I ran into the workforce problem. You know what my plan was regarding the UNE to hijack their populations. You know that in reorganizing the planets, I gained a significant diplomacy advantage in the Senate. You know that I increased my naval capacity a lot. You know that the UNE saw all of that and then decided to attack me as a result. They saw the writing on the wall. And you know what my, that I had to move. You, you just saw me reorganize workers so that we're, we're gonna have plenty of energy credits. And you saw the strategy I plan on using to force the UNE to capitulate as soon as possible. This is gonna be something like shock and awe. That's the plan. We wanna hit them in the face so hard and make the cost so ridiculously high for them that they decide we're not ready for this, let's back off for now. And hopefully they will not have taken very much away from us by the time that happens. And we will once again be free to uh, build up our forces and stuff. So there you go. Um, I just saved it. And that should be, we should be good to go from there. Again, I'm Aesop Grimm. Thank you for coming by the channel. I hope all is well in your neck of the woods. And I'll see you in the next episode where this story continues.